right, you see three torque curves. One's at 42, one's at uh, <coughs> 48, 42, and 24 volts. The reason we have 42 is there's a lot of unregulated power supplies that flow down 42. that are no higher than 48 when it's unloaded. Okay, these are on the same scale. In other words, here's 5,000 RPM, here's 5,000 RPM, here's 5,000 RPM. Well, this motor goes really fast. It goes 10,000 RPM. Okay, we'll also ask you about gear ratios. If somebody tries to pump 10,000 RPM in their gear head, they're not going to get there from here. Okay, about 7,500 is max on the apex of gear heads only, and everybody else is 5,000 and lower. Okay, so he says he only needs to go to say 2,000 RPM, but you drop it down to 2,000 RPM, you may still have the same continuous torque. You actually do. You even have close to the same peak torque, but your power curve went way down. Okay? You see how the power curve goes way up here to 180 watts? Down here, it's down around, I don't know, 30 or 40 watts. Okay? It's a factor of a squared difference. When you double voltage, you get twice the speed, but you get four times the XL D-cell. Okay? When you have the voltage, you get half the speed, but you get one-fourth the XL D-cell. Because power is voltage times current, okay, you get a multiplying effect when you double voltage. Okay? So if somebody says, I don't need to index my machine quickly, but all I do is indexing quickly forward, they say, I'm not going that fast. Guess what? You can't index nearly as fast anyway. Go to 48 volts if you want high speed axle D cell, even if your top end velocity is not that fast. Very important. That is a huge difference in power between these curves. That's a little tiny bump there. That's a huge amount of power you get by doubling voltage. Okay? You get four times the power for doubling the voltage. Very, very important. Now, the vice versa occurs within the same power. If I'm only trying to get 30 watts out of this motor at 24 volts, it takes twice as much current than it does at 48. Now, how many people in here have handled switch mode power supplies? Everybody should be raising your hand, because I know every one of you in here handles some kind of power supplies. How many in here handle mean well or, 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 or or pulse or somebody like that. <coughs> if you notice how they sell power supplies, they do not sell them by voltage or current, they sell them by wattage. Why? Because wattage is heat, as power. Okay? A 48 volt 10 amp supply costs about the same thing as a 24 volt 20 amp supply. It's power. Okay? There's no freaking difference. They're going to sell you the same power supply, half the voltage and twice the current for the same price as they would twice the voltage and half the current. Okay? Power is power. But when it comes to the motor, what power you give it is what we have to work with. The thing is, when we dropped the voltage in half, the resistance and the windings did not change. The motor is still the same motor. It's still the same drive stage. Since the resistance in the windings did not change, then you're not going to get near as much power when you drop the voltage. Very important to remember that. Okay? You don't want to screw yourself and not have enough power to do the job. So I'm not saying you always need 48 volts, but I'm saying if you want really high speed, tight, snappy XL D cell, even though your top end velocity is not that high, you may want to consider staying at 48 volts. It's very important. 